And hello, everybody. Welcome back to AWS Security Live, live from AWS reInvent in Las Vegas. This is a show we get to talk to you about AWS security and solving some of those security challenges with our AWS partners. I'm one of your co-hosts, Ryan Orsi. I lead a team of partner specialists in security, identity, and cloud operations. And I'm joined by the title is favorite co-host. Favorite <laughs> co-host, every time. Please keep doing that, Ryan. I just uh, keep inflating this guy, it's great. I think that goes on my annual review. Sure does. Somewhere in there. Uh, my name is Brian Mendenhall. I am the worldwide head of security and identity partner specialist organization team uh, you add a, you add a team. You I'm add a just going to keep adding words every time. If you've been uh, watching all the way through the day, I think he's been adding another word. My on the title, title shows up <laughs> underneath there, and I need it. I need it to be a paragraph. But I, uh, we are here with Francesca. Hi, everyone. I'm Francesca from Dartrace, and I have the privilege of leading the uh, strategy and go-to-market for cloud, which means I get to hang out with AWS and the Partner Ecosystem, so it's great. You're going to hang out with us? So exciting. It's good, to, it's good to see you back. <laughs> good to and, see you guys. Uh, Francesca, maybe for those that don't know you or Dartrace, yeah. you know, it's kind of what you do there, your role in the company, of course. We really want to learn more about how you help customers with their security outcomes. Great. Take it away. Thank you. So, Dartrace is a leader in AI for cybersecurity, um, and we have 10,000 customers um, globally that trust our AI to do threat detection and response to novel attacks, right? That's really critical. We'll talk about that quite a lot later. Um, and we are, yeah, a, a global business, and we've been partnered with AWS um, through our cloud journey for about eight years now. Awesome. Um, and I kicked off the partnership about four years as a true kind of technical alliance, right? You guys are the fabric that we develop on um, and then go to market with. So um, over the last kind of couple of years, we have built out an alliance's kind of sales, uh, marketing and operations team to again have a kind of better together story of being like a preferred AI cybersecurity partner for those customers that are transitioning, migrating and maturing um, their organizations to cloud. Well, and thank you for that yep. intro. And Francesca, yep. I failed to intro the swear jar. <gasps> And that's the acronym swear jar, ye, ye Wait, old. Can I make one exception? Acronym swear jar. What's my exception going to be? AI is of easy course. one. AI, um, we, we've v got a pass for that. EC2, I think, is an easy one. So I won't say any of those things, but if I could say AI rather than artificial intelligence, otherwise we're going to be here forever. Well, you you know what that one is that one's is, we let that one go by. You know what we need okay, we need like a whiteboard of like acceptable authorized acceptable. hall pass hall pass list. Yeah, and then. So yes. simple storage service, am I right? Sorry, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> it's gone south. Oh. It's gone so south. I love it's it. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. <laughs> you, uh, so there was there was so much in uh, in your your welcome into this that I, I want to hear this novel this novel thing. Tell me yeah. more about that. Yeah. So. Dutch Race has a really, really interesting history, actually. So we've been around over 10 years and started as a AI research center. So quite unusual in that oh, sense. Interesting. Yeah. So um, we, when you think about back in kind of 2013, we were barely talking about AI, even less so talking about cyber AI. In fact, I was doing a master's at that point in time. I think the idea of kind of cyber security and cyber attacks was mentioned maybe once during my security module, right? So. But our founders came from the intelligence community, right? And so they kind of saw um, cyber attacks starting at the nation state level. And so they kind of predicted that that would really trickle down um, into both public sector and then corporate. And what they, they saw was in the cybersecurity kind of industry, the philosophy behind it um, was to really ask the question, is this good or bad, right? And that is based on kind of known or rules or signatures or really h historical ta attack data. Sure. Um, and that's fantastic. That will get you most of the way there because most of the threats that we see have been seen before and they've been identified as something good or bad. But how do you detect novel threats, right? And kind of over the, the course of the years, you know, it's become a much more complex, um, you know, sort of a, organizations and, and attack surface area, mm -hmm. right, has, has increased. Well, now and every so, every human has multiple devices. Everything right. is running inside different uh, cloud environments, and every application generates logs. We've been saying everything in the world starts with a log, but their logs are created at the user level or the API access level, so stitching it all together can be quite a challenge. 
Exactly. So how do you predict something that, that you can't, right? right? So what we did was in our AI research center, right, we um, gave our kind of hundred doctorates and, and master uh, brilliant people um, the task of, of figuring out, let's ask the question, what is normal? So what is normal for the individual business? What is normal for you, the Brian and Ryan company, right? <laughs> so, um, and, and once you kind of build that pattern of life and pattern of understanding of what is truly normal for your business, then anything that deviates statistically, you want to know about, right? Yeah. And so if we um, bring that to life, so our first ever customer was a kind of power infrastructure organization, um, and they are very vulnerable to nation state attacks, right? right? Oh yes, and public safety is at, at risk here, exactly. Critical infrastructure, yeah. yeah. Exactly, and this was again back in kind of 2014, right? And so we deployed our kind of AI algorithms, um, which we described is kind of unsupervised machine learning as opposed to supervised. So again, it doesn't go in with any preconceptions. It learns what's normal. And we saw that, um, you know, malicious actors had um, got through the perimeter defenses and they'd actually transversed from the network into the operational technology. So um, the critical infrastructure, yeah. right? So immediately this customer said, well, we need to bring this visibility not just to your network, but to your operational technology too. So kind of over time, what we did was we developed kind of our AI to look at the data wherever that data is. So we're now a platform player, basically. Right, and I, I, love, I love the fact you said operational technology. I mean, so some folks may not be thinking, right, that of course, yeah. anything with an IP address now, uh, vibration sensors, uh, rotational uh, sensors on large machinery, anything with an IP address eventually makes its way through your network. The network makes its way to wherever you're hosting your applications. Could be cloud, could be elsewhere. But I think that's also very unique in a lot of conversations Brian and I have been having with different companies around the world mm -hmm. is the holistic view. When, when someone says, I'm not sure where my, my threats are, my attack surface is, or how far does it span? The good thing about it is when it's in the cloud, you know exactly where it mm. is. It is contained. Now, there's a lot of telemetry that comes out of that, uh, but I love that you're, you're also taking into account operational technology, not just information technology. And, and absolutely, so I mean, the convergence between IT and OT, and I can use those acronyms. Okay, are we, are we okay IT, with that? IT, nope, that's, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, so, you know, as we're starting to see that kind of convergence and obviously, uh, again, you know, manufacturing kind of regulated um, organizations want to leverage and kind of, um, you know, really bring cloud in, right, for all the efficiencies that you can gain, right? You're, 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 pol you're poking holes into your OT systems and that just, again, increases your attack surface area. And so, you know, the challenge is if you, if you have um, kind of one lens looking at OT, one lens looking at yeah. IT, one lens looking at cloud, they can obviously see vulnerabilities that happen within that you know, one domain. Right. But obviously now we have multi-stage, multi-domain attacks. Absolutely, and as the operational technology environment has become more interconnected with the enterprise environment, mm. right now it has become one monolithic structure of uh, like a giant application and workload. The things that used to work in operational technology uh, may not work in the enterprise environment, the, the IT environment. So, and what, is, what has happened, and Ryan, you mentioned uh, the complexity of everything with an IP. That's right. Some of those things with IP might be like Windows 98 running yeah. an old Legacy machine. Legacy systems, oh, exactly. Goodness. Oh, hang gonna, in there. I'm gonna fall over. <laughs> oh. okay. Yeah, so how, I mean, uh, uh, going across some of these legacy systems mm -hmm. and stitching together typically disparate like systems, how do you how do you work to, to create that visibility and, and how do you stitch this all together? Yeah, so, so again, you know, we, we don't care whether you're a satellite in space, whether you're in a manufacturing organization, a financial institution, it does not matter. All we're doing is, you know, bringing our unsupervised machine learning along with other AI techniques to learn what is normal for the individual user and devices. So I like to describe it as like conversations between IP addresses, right? Suddenly if you've got data filtrating out to a random unknown domain that's 100% anomalous, yeah. you want to know about that. And by the way, because we're looking at what normal is, like we're not defining what is good or bad, right? We also see some 
unusual attacks. Right. So um, ah. I can think I can think about um, uh, an airport uh, in in Australia where malicious actors um, turned on the uh, the water sprinklers to <laughs> to oh, wow. increase the water bill. Um, that of, sounds of like the something my friends would have done decades <laughs> decades ago. They're trying ago. to mess with you. <laughs> Just to mess with people. They're trying to mess with you. Yeah, exactly. Great. But all the same, it's an attack and it's business disruption and sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes that's the point that yeah. the attackers are looking for, just to disrupt the business. Precisely. Yeah. And, you know, that's obviously, you know, a little bit uh, less risky than we see on kind of critical infrastructure. But, you know, in, in other areas like pharmaceutical companies, so we've seen changes in temperatures of the refrigeration systems of critical yeah. drugs, right? Yeah. Um, we see a load of Bitcoin mining, my goodness. Um, really? Yeah, loads of that. It's, it still it's, happens. It, it's calmed down. It's calmed okay. down. It was big a few years ago. Yeah, um, yeah. And then one of my all-time favorites, which is uh, a, a, an age-old dart tray story. But, um, you know, we've, we've, we've worked with the city of Las Vegas for, for many, many years. We also work with a number of casinos um, across Las Vegas. Um, and there was a connected fish tank um, in one of the casinos. And a malicious actor got in through there transverse through vulnerabilities into the network. So the, we the, fish, the Wi-Fi enabled fish tank yep. was the entry point. It used to be printers. Now lock up your fish. Lock up your fish. <laughs> do, do you know where your fish are right now? Yes. What are, the fish is in there with the keyboard. It's, it's, it's horrible. Uh, <laughs> keep the keyboards away from the fish. There you go. So, uh, you so never know. You, you never, never know. know. You never know. So my next question is, is if you are saying, hey, we don't need to uh, just rely on the known tactics, techniques, and procedures, the TTPs, but we can also expand into uh, creating, identifying new, uh, un like, malicious behavior, mm. do you, what do you do with that data? Do you take that back and say, hey, now we've seen this technique, uh, now we, we can add this to, like, our, our book of known bad techniques? Um, is yeah. there some sort of is feedback loop? Firewall, port, block? Yes, We're no, using but, very overly simplistic methods yeah, here. I, but, yeah. but again, again, kind of the fundamental approach is not to kind of name whether something is good or bad, right? So right. we saw Log4j before no one, before anyone knew what it was, right? And so you're right, we definitely do. So we do have kind of, you know, part of, of the platform will then help you kind of prioritize to do more preventative um, cybersecurity. I think where our customers wanted to go past the detection phase was the response phase, right? Yeah. So it would be good to just kind of touch upon that because we do autonomous response. And the way that we do it is just by enforcing normal, right? So again, um, you know, you lose, you're using your laptop and then again, you've got, you know, malicious payload that you've, you've clipped on by mistake. That's exploit tra tracing data to a random domain. We'll surgically stop that from happening, but you can still, you know, carry on and, and, and you know, work in your business as you would, right? And that has been, again, really critical for customers. And interestingly, um, more and more of our operational technology um, users as well are enforcing uh, normal at nighttime, on the weekends. So you can kind of pick and choose when you bring in the autonomous response. Because obviously for, again, mission critical systems, it's quite nerve wracking to bring AI to actually autonomously me respond. Right. But now more and more, because we're seeing kind of the complexity increase and the nature of attacks um, be much more accurate that they want to lean into AI to do that too. Interesting. Oh, fantastic. Is our, with the flexibility of the models that are available mm -hmm. out there in the world, including our own bedrock service with several models mm -hmm. underneath, would all mo is there a reason in your mind of like the, the the different models and the uses for detecting what's normal? As I'm hearing you say, the un unsupervised machine learning, uh, that's a great, that's a great great tactic to use to understand what is normal for an environment, very specific mm. to a, an organization, but does it, do you leverage different models during that normalization baselining process? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, we have a, a, a number of different kind of techniques. Um, so you've got, you've got the supervised machine learning, which again is learning from a historic tactic. So maybe for your own business as well. Mm -hmm. So to a point about like, we have a comment. <laughs> <laughs> please, please keep going. Please keep going. The voice from above the voice just from above chimed just into our ears. The, the god above us has a comment. <laughs> um, so yeah, so uh, again, looking kind of that historical attack data mm -hmm. for your individual business to help you kind of prevent future attacks and actually prioritize as well, because that's really critical, right? If you are 
was just with a, a head of healthcare earlier today, right? And we we're yeah. talking about connected devices. Um, and again, healthcare industry moving towards cloud, and they've got a lot of IoT, Internet of Things. Um, and nice. Oh, nice. Well done, Francesca. Nice. I caught well that done. one. I caught that one. Um, uh, and again, they're, they're open to a, kind of a lot of vulnerabilities. But by kind of looking at different metrics for that individual device or individual user, right? Um, you can predict what is normal versus that one, and then you compare it and contrast it with your peers, right? So again, yeah. in the Ryan and Brian company, the finance team versus the HR team. Um, so you get a very, very deep understanding of what normal looks like. That's super interesting. I mean, the, the complexity of not just understanding basic uh, security controls and what good looks like, but also the business context yeah. as a part of that. Context is, is so, so critical. And that, that kind of, I guess, leads us into the automation of investigation as well. So this is the, the, the three key areas that we're doing is like, we started with that detection piece, customers said, great, we now need it to respond for us because we're seeing machine speed attacks. But now, you know, we've got so many more alerts, we're having alert fatigue. And by the way, there's a, I heard on this stat yesterday that there are, in the cybersecurity industry, we're missing four million. Oh gosh. People? Yeah. Oh yeah, I've heard. Yes, yeah. these are these are we, we estimate at least four million cybersecurity jobs that need to be filled. Yes. that we don't have human beings on the planet yet with the skill sets to fill them. Right? Isn't that? It's wild. Isn't that wild? It's wild. It really is. And, and another stat: it takes 277 days, according to IBM, for security teams to identify and contain a breach. Right? So, it's becoming really, really difficult. So, what we then said: well, how do we make this easier for customers? How do we leverage our our understanding of what normal is to actually automate the investigation. So we had, this was uh, back many moons ago, but um, we effectively just observed what our 100 analyst team was doing, right? How they actually look at incidents, how they respond, how they triage. Um, and we created a layer of supervised machine learning that again, automates that process. And that is now saving customers 94%. Uh, of time, so they can move from a reactive state to proactive state. Time wow. to detect, to remediate that, that exactly. particular time, that's, that's huge. Most of them are, 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 are mundane, right? Most right. of them, you've got a lot of false positives out there, you've got a lot of log, logs you've got to sift through. So how can we leverage AI to kind of do some of that work? How long does it take to baseline what normal looks like? Very good question. So um, it depends on whether you talk about instance response okay. um, or just in general. Listen, when we when we work with uh, customers, um, we give it about seven days to get that initial baseline. But don't forget that is constantly evolving, mm. like every week, every day, every hour, right? And so you know, as normal evolves, evolves your business. So we've had customers now for, for for ten years. Again, let's think about the city of Las Vegas, right? So did they predict that they'd be hosting Formula One and NFL and and, and all of these and reinvent and re it was reinvent, reinvent, baby? I forget about that one. How many people are at reinvent? Ten billion. You hear you heard it here first. <laughs> There are 10 Cut. billion people here. <laughs> I really want to know. I've heard 60,000, I've heard 80,000. I don't know what it is. But My a producer lot of people. has an ax. So that's our weird. Our producer <laughs> is getting out her throwing knives right now as we speak. Um, so, you know, they they couldn't predict that what they would be a smart um, smart city, right? Yeah. And so we've been through them throughout that process. They have driverless cars, right? And so, again, you know, all we're doing with that organization is just kind of being that like AI uh, partner to really help to, you know, defend against the inevitable. <laughs> and the unknown as and the well. Unknown. I mean, that's what right. I love at what you all are doing with us and AWS and, and Darktrace <laughs> together is knowing what's normal for a unique an organization is unique and it, you can call it their own company signature uh, and detecting abnormal activity around it. I think it's a very noble cause. Francesca, we're about to wrap up, but any last words of what you're excited about to come next at reInvent before we... Well, I, I was just saying, so there's been the launch of this uh, instance response service. I'm really, really excited to hear about that. Oh, Absolutely. yes. We'll, we'll speak more soon. But yeah. uh, Francesca from Darktrace, thank you for joining thank us thank on Security much. Live. Uh, folks, stay tuned. Up next is CrowdStrike and Mission Cloud. We'll be right back in just a sec.